Lay. Sir. Yeah. Yeah. Kane is in the building. Yeah. It's alright, already the show goes on all night. Till uh. the morning we dream so long. Do anybody ever wonder when they will see the thunder? Just remember when you come up. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Overseas Famous Podcast. Uh, great show today. I'm Kevin Owens, uh, obviously producer DJ John Hunt. We are joined today, um, special guest Max DeLeo. Uh, Max, uh, we have a similarity in terms of both played at Monmouth University. Uh, both played overseas. So Max is going to share his story, kind of talk about some of those similarities. And uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. I actually, uh, before the show, we were talking and I actually got shamed because uh, I wasn't wearing any, I got I got logo brand shamed because I wasn't wearing any overseas famous gear or Mammoth gear. So I went and changed into my Mike Mammoth. Mike would say that is a violation. Not to yeah, I have my stuff. Mammoth University belly shirt on because that's pretty much <laughs> how it is now. <laughs> But I'm sure everyone who's watching at home will be uh, sad to hear. He had the guns out, man. You could tell. I did like, have the guns out. Yeah. Everything was rippling over there. <laughs> well, it's funny. So, so Max, last year uh, I did sleeveless summer where, like, I tried to go an entire summer without wearing sleeves. And um, I, it, I did because I just get sweaty easily. And so I'm like, whatever, I'm not wearing sleeves. So I did it all summer. So all the shows from last summer are sleeves. And then now I'm, that I'm, like, 40 – I'm just like, all right, I don't think I can do that anymore. But that, I, almost, I almost did it. So I, I, that was in the back of my mind. So when you guys started going with the mom's gear, it just gave me more incentive to just change. It changed. Yeah. <laughs> it may have gotten awkward last summer because I did have someone at some point, I can't remember who it was, asked me, they're like, does that guy ever wear, like, shirts? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, you know, sleep the summer. What can I say? That's, a, that's an awkward uh, – you know when you're, like, secondhand embarrassed? <laughs> like, did you feel that for me? Because now I'm like, I'm like, oh, that sucks. Like, I've I never like, heard no, that he's story before. a professional before. athlete. Like, look at look at me. You know, like if I had arms like that, I might go sleep this summer as well. But yeah, but my like, arms are right not. Now, my I'm arms are not what they used to be. Yeah, my arms are like there's. It's like weird. There's like just like, there's bigness, but then there's like ripple, and it's just not. It's it's not a scene for the radio slash podcasting anymore. So I'm gonna wear a shirt from now on. It is a different ball In game. In fact, I'm going to wear full sleeves. I'm going to wear hoodies. Hoodie summer. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, people are going to start writing in. Tell the dude to wear sleeves. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. You have no idea the, the actual nature of my embarrassment right now. I'm like slowly <laughs> processing this. Whatever. All right, Max. It's like two hours before this interview. All right. On to yeah. the actual content. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> I just... Should I go get my sleeveless shirt or what? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to show the difference between what a 40-year-old looks like in a sleeveless shirt and what an actual professional athlete looks. And then you guys spot the difference. Oh, man. And then All an right. overweight uh, music teacher producer. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> going to wear sleeveless. So, Max, first off, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, all the way from Germany. We were talking a little bit before the show. Um, just about the situation in Germany. And uh, we, in America, I feel like things are starting to open. It's like, uh, we had guy, I had friends in Australia, New Zealand that we had on the show. And it was almost like we talked to them. What was that? That was like, what, eight months ago, six months ago? And they were like, yeah, things are really strict. And then some of the guys were like, now things are open up. And, and we're kind of experiencing that. You were just telling us that in Germany, things are starting to, uh, you know, con con condense back up and uh, seal back up. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been weird. Um, I don't think it's necessarily the, the number of cases or whatever is going up. I think just as they're getting the vaccines out, they don't want things to get worse before then. So they're really trying to tighten it up until, you know, we're, we're at a point over here where we can open up like the States has. 
That's so that's crazy. I mean, it's good. Obviously, the the caution. How is that going in terms of just being a basketball player and you know going through practice, going through protocols? I'm sure you're getting COVID tests, and now, especially with everything going up, your COVID testing, your restrictions are probably going up as well. Oh yeah. I mean, luckily we're still able to play because that was in the beginning. That was all up in the air. Um, wow. We haven't had fans all season, which I mean, I can talk about that later. That's really interesting. Mm-hmm. But as far as everyday life, it's tough because we practice in the morning. I come back to my apartment and there's not much to do, especially when it was winter. You know, you're just sitting at home all day. You don't you don't have that mental freedom to kind of get away from basketball, which, I mean, you know, you need sometimes. You need yeah. to get away. That's crazy. Um, and the COVID test, right now we're doing it three times a week, which tons of fun. Um, <laughs> and playoffs start in a few weeks. And I don't know, I, I guess in like a week or two, we're going to start doing it every day. Like, yeah. which is, you know, if that, that makes everything safer, you know, whatever I got to do. But, you know, it's just, we got to really be, We really got to be smart because a positive case in playoff time, I think we have to forfeit the games, which that's crazy. Well, that's the, I mean, they always talked about um, with the, even with college basketball and, you know, the NCAA tournament, that became such a big thing uh, because kids were like back and forth and they're like, what do we do? Should we, should we, you know, quarantine? Should we like, they had this whole entire thing set up. Uh, and people were terrified because, you know, when you're in the and I remember even before the tournament, people were betting and stuff and they're just like, well, this team has some guys that are coming back. And it's 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 crazy how constricted it is and how how it like even betting wise, like people are you know, people are like throwing tons of money up and you're just at the will of the uh, medical community. Yeah, it's I mean, it's because. I'm no expert, so I have no idea what's going on. I'm just trying to follow the rules. And, like, (laughs) now the weather's getting nice and I want to do more stuff. And then at the same time, I'm like, all right, well, I can't do this. I can't do that. I don't want to be the guy on my team that gets sick. And just because – even if just I have it, the whole team's going to have to quarantine Mm -hmm. and we're going to have to forfeit games or get them rescheduled at a a bad time. And it's just – it's it's I don't want to be that guy and it's it's weird to to go through life like that you know that's crazy so take us through uh you would mention it before take us through a season uh where there is where there are no fans and kind of you know we'll talk more about like the the impact that has as a player but just take us through that that whole entire just empty arena feeling yeah it's it's just weird is like the best way I could put it because during the game, I mean, as a player, you probably know, most of the time, you're not paying attention to the fans. You're kind of in the zone or whatever. But when things are going well, things are going your way, things are clicking, those fans give you like a crazy boost. And then the opposite too. When things aren't going well and you're in a different gym, you know, that can really hurt you. Um, So you don't have that. It's just kind of like even energy throughout the whole game. we made it a point this year, like on our bench to really try and, uh, you know, try and bring the energy uh, into the team. So I think that's good because the way, um, like my personality is, I think that's just a good culture to have uh, on a team. So I think that helps some players, especially some of the young guys that may, may not play much to, you know, start taking those little things into account and how they can help the team from the bench and that kind of stuff. But um, having no fans, you know, the refs, it's (laughs) tough because you don't – no, there's no fans to put them in check, you know. If they're making a couple bad calls or something like that, you don't have that home game advantage you would um, with the referees a little bit. You know, they're going to call what they want anyway, but – you know, if they make a bad call and the refs get on them, then, you know, they might, they might all right, I got to make up for this or <laughs> I'm doing a little bit too much. And then at the same time, there's no noise in the gym. So 
there's a bad call. You say something little to the ref <laughs> that nobody would ever hear, and all of a sudden it's like a technical, you know? I think you're the first person that's hit on that. Um, and, you you know, we I, I talked a lot about – you know, the, the language barrier and, you know, you, the, the, all those refs know every single American curse word. So when you just say something <laughs> under your breath, like you're hoping that crowd hears it because they'll understand what you said. Uh, mm -hmm. But, but having that be such a, you know, such a, a difference where you could get away with it in a packed house and not everything goes. Uh, frozen a little bit. Yeah. What? Say, say that again you froze a little bit oh there. sorry so like the yeah. the nba you know there's more technical fouls being called for things that he probably wouldn't get called for on a normal in a normal day yeah and i feel like a lot of the time it's not it's not even something directed at the ref you might just say something out of frustration to yourself or do some kind of reaction but when there's no other input from the environment it's like that's just what they focus on whoa all right there's a lot going on in my computer right now <laughs> i was like i was i was there's like stuff going off my computer's like the connections <laughs> going in and out I, I feel like we're getting a storm coming and I was like, that's what I was hoping. I was like, I don't hear wind, but I'm like wondering if things are just getting blown down all around my house. But who knows? I'm in Cherry yeah, Hill. Well, kind of, uh, uh, so going, I mean, I know you're a, you're a Cinnamonson guy, right? Yeah, yeah, right around the corner. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, but kind of going, it's, it's wild to me that, um, you know, the, the, we're told all our lives, like, don't worry about the fans. Don't worry about this game. Don't worry about this. Like, the fans are going to tell you this. The fans are going to sway you this way. The fans are going to do this. And you're always taught to, like, not care, like, about what's going on around you in that arena. And now when it's, like, completely empty, you realize what an impact it plays in the game. And uh, it's just wild to me that, you know, now that you're playing in front of no fans – uh, you really start noticing those subtle differences of things that you're taught not to notice. And you're like, I'm good. Like the crowd's not getting to my head. And now when there's no crowd, you're like, whoa, this is crazy. Yeah. It, it, it's so strange. Like I remember the time that it really hit me this year was, um, I think we were up by like one or two in a game and at the buzzer, the other team shoots a three. And you know, when that happens in the gym, it gets really quiet. Yeah. They miss, it comes off. Normally, it gets loud as hell, like everybody's <laughs> cheering. And all of a sudden, they just miss, and it's just dead quiet still. And I'm like, this is – like, I like it felt weird to celebrate. I'm like, what's going on? Like, Yeah. You right? even, yeah, like you don't even know how to react. It's wild. Yeah, yeah it's, it's so weird. It's so weird. But, I mean, at this point, I'm – getting used to it a mm. little bit and it, I mean it's helped me too um like I said just being more proactive on the bench like it's helped me grow as a player and the stuff with the referees you know talking to the refs those kind of reactions that, that doesn't help you much so the less you do with that you know it's it's better and yeah and I mean it was really tough in the beginning because not only because the German league was canceled um, in March of last year mm -hmm. and then they resumed in like May or June for um, like a six week tournament in a bubble. Mm -hmm. And there was only like maybe six referees there. And other than that, those referees, they hadn't, hadn't ref since, February, March of the previous year. So coming back in, in the beginning of the season, it, it was a little shaky with their calls and <laughs> it's, it's gotten better. So it's, I'm getting used to it. Um, I think everybody like, this is just the way the season's going to be this year. And we can only hope that uh, next season is just going to be a little bit um, back to normal. I saw, I saw that you're a baseball, you're a baseball player. Was that at Mama too, or at some point? Baseball? Yeah. No, I, I, I did. I thought there was an image online. There must be another Matalea. It looks exactly like you, man. 
<laughs> no, no. I, I, I played soccer growing up. I was actually in high school probably better at soccer than basketball. You know what? I did hear that. Some, I, I, like, I feel like we've rolled with like similar people. Mm-hmm. And I've like followed because I know when I was, I worked out for the Sixers and, and, try, and was, um, you know, trying to get into, onto the Sixers team when right before your dad took over. So, okay. and you know, for those of you who don't know, Tony DeLeo, uh, Max's dad, coached, you know, front office guy, great uh, human being, but front office guy for the uh, Sixers for a while. But before that, played overseas, uh, coached overseas. Um, I actually, I've, I've talked to your dad not too, uh, a, f- a while back. Um, he's just, you know, terrific guy, terrific human being. But I was, when, when Mo Cheeks was there, the, his last year before he left, that summer, um, that was what I was, I was, I was trying to, trying to make that team. And, uh, it's crazy. Cause then your dad took over and I was like, I wonder if like your dad would have liked me more than Mo Cheeks did, but it's, <laughs> it's neither here, here nor there. But, uh, I do remember, like, I kind of followed you and TJ because I knew TJ too, because, you know, the temple connection mm-hmm. and, um, Mike Jordan, Matt Langle. So Matt Langle was an assistant and I knew Dumpy well. So like when TJ was playing, like I would go and watch Temple play. So I kind of knew your family, you know, just through the, you know, through the South Jersey grapevine, but it's Mm -hmm. pretty cool that, um, you know, I, and then when you went to Monmouth, I was like, Oh, sweet. This is nice. So take us through that. You're you're at Monmouth. Uh, Were you there when Calway Calway's last year or did you just miss him? I just missed him. My first okay. year was King Rice's first year. Okay. I wasn't sure if you if you caught on. I couldn't remember the exact story of when he left. It was mid-season or if he just left at the end of the season. I, what, I think he, it was at the end of the season. Did he recruit you at all? No. I wasn't recruited hardly at all. There was a few teams interested. Um, Division two, you know, I had some scholarships and – some teams interested and I was really thrown around the idea of division three and playing basketball and soccer. That's awesome. Um, Cause I, I mean, I was solid at soccer. I, you know, I got more awards in high school for soccer than I did basketball. Mm-hmm. And I, but I knew I wanted to play basketball. So I, I didn't want to give that up. And I just, I never played AAU really. Um, mm-hmm. I always did like spring soccer. And so going into college, I, you know, I wasn't heavily recruited. Um, I was thinking about, uh, you know, doing like a, a, an extra year, like a, a prep year. Yeah. And I just really didn't want to. <laughs> I was like, I, it's my time to go to college. All my friends yeah. are going to college. Like, I, I just want to be there. Like, I'll, I'll find a way to make it work. Um, so I just went and I visited some schools, uh, Mammoth, one of them, to uh, just talk to the coaches and be like, hey, listen, this is my tape, everything. Um, I, I just want to walk onto your team. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, like, they weren't that interested. They're like, all of our scholarships are given out already. And I'm like, all right, like, just give me a chance. You know, that's all I ask for. Basketball is my dream. Even if I don't play, like, I just want to, I just want to keep playing. And um, luckily the coaches, King Rice uh, and the other coaches there, they had a little connection uh, through my dad and Larry Brown, who's a Carolina guy. Mm -hmm. Um, And I guess uh, they talked to Larry Brown and just said like, you know, I don't know basketball wise how he is but I know his family and they're good people and he was like if if he wants to walk onto your team like I would give him a spot and so they told me you know before I even went there to try out like hey like you have a spot as a walk-on like we don't have any scholarships but we want you to know you're a part of this team and you know that was huge that they gave me that opportunity and as soon as I heard that it was set I'm like mom if it is that's so cool. It's it's rare to kind of hear that story of, you know, it, it's it's very unique to to have that, you know, you're a very good high school basketball player and then kind of going in and being like, okay, now 
here's that opportunity and like having to kind of like fight for every single thing that you have, uh, which is super cool. Cause I feel like that's, you know, that's like Philly for you. That's like what, what we're known for is just kind of always, always fighting to fighting to go. And I'm, that's like a really great accomplishment. And then you go to Monmouth, you end up, you know, being a, a very good player at Monmouth and, uh, now kind of take us through that Monmouth university to professional basketball. Uh, well, going to Monmouth was, you know, it turned out to be such a great decision um, for my career as far mm -hmm. as developing. Like when I got there, I thought, you know, I was averaging over 20 points in high school and killing it. I thought I'd go there and be like, oh, yeah, I just got to show them. And I quickly realized, like, oh, I got a, I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> and uh, And I just wanted to help the team. I just wanted to you know, just do the best at whatever I could do the best in. So I was always trying to be, you know, the hardest worker and just the loudest person on the bench and in practice. And, you know, that got me just a little bit of time. And just through practicing and everything, I just developed more and more. And my junior and senior year where uh, I did pretty well. Mm -hmm. And I started getting a couple offers from Germany because my brother was playing there and because I have a dual citizenship because um, mm -hmm. my mom has a German citizenship. Yep. So um, once I heard that, I was kind of like all in, like, this is what I'm going to do. Even if it doesn't pan out, like I need to try it. It's been my, you know, I mean, Growing up, it's always NBA, NBA, but yeah. just to be a professional basketball player, it's like, just to say I was for one year, that that's worth it for me. So um, after, yeah, after college, um, I, I had a few offers in the second league and maybe like, uh, or a few teams interested in the second league and a few teams in the third league interested. And I kind of, I found a good spot on, a team in uh in the second division that was you know I liked the coach I talked to him and you know really um just kind of panned out like perfectly like I don't see how it could go any better and <laughs> maybe it could have I could have gotten lucky in some other ways but like in my mind the way Mammoth happened me being a walk-on for three years and having to fight for that spot made me a better player and to get to this team in the in the second league which just the coach trusted me and gave me chances. Like it just, it fell into place. And I, I feel really lucky for that. That's so cool. So you, yeah. your, your senior year at Monmouth, you were offered a scholarship, correct? Yeah. How was yeah, that? that was... How was that? How did that go down with like, you always see these videos of just like, they're just like, Oh, Hey. And then all of a sudden everyone jumps up and pours water over their head and stuff. Was it, was it like that? Or was it like a big cool surprise or was it just like, brought you into your office and you're just like hey guess what um yeah it was it was a surprise it wasn't anything too crazy um I know if I remember coach Rice and some of the other coaches brought me into a meeting and they were going over I think they had some people in there talking to them about the pack line defense and going over points on on this <laughs> stuff and I sat through this meeting for like an hour and a half and I'm like just listening like taking it in or whatever and then coach Rice is like oh come on a walk with me and we walk around campus a little bit just talking takes me to the football field football team's practicing and he just like oh yeah uh, by the way like you deserve this you earn this uh, we're we're gonna give you a scholarship for next year and Oh, that just that that was like the best feeling ever because that was my goal from once I realized I couldn't get a scholarship, it was like, okay, get playing time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Earn that scholarship. And yeah, that that felt really good. And um he, you know, he told me or he mentioned before, like, you earn this. Um you earn this when you first when you first got here. Um you know, but we had our scholarships given out. And if we were to give you a scholarship, we, ha we would have to take one away from somebody else. And 
they never put me in that situation. Thank God, because yeah. that would have, I, I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. But they, they really did right by the opportunities that they gave me and how they helped me and giving me that scholarship my senior year. That was big time. That's so cool. Mm-hmm. But I want to actually, I have a question because this is, and I, I feel like I know, but I just for the, for the listeners and the viewers. So your apartment right now that you're staying at, you got yeah. there and that shit was like what it was, right? Like you didn't go in and decorate. You just, yup. Because yeah, it, yeah. it's these, so, these it's like, paintings. <laughs> yeah, it's like so funny because people will think that that's like you came in and you decorated that. Like John, did you think that was like his style? It's funny. I had that exact thought. I was like, that's very, very yeah. artistic, Max. It so is I'm very like, artistic. You know, like, hey, cool, you know. <laughs> I'm sure there's some I, I got it. A, a nice dream catcher in my, in my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird. I do, I, you know, I, being over here bored sometimes, mm-hmm. um, I, I started painting that's a few sweet. years back. Like, I, I painted the, I, I could show you probably, but I painted the picture of um, Alan Iverson stepping over Tyrone. Oh Hill. yeah, yeah, oh, we yeah. See that. I mean, I got a whole. It's right here. I can show you. I got a whole bunch now. I got a lot better at painting. Oh look oh, at wow. this! Dang. Yeah. So that's, that's awesome. Kobe. It, I don't know if you can see if I can point to it. That one's the uh, Iverson stepping over. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. This is super. And cool. I got Jordan. Yeah, but I just kind of went on board. You know, I'll do something to you know make my apartment a little bit cooler but i don't this is just what i do if i'm bored and i got time to kill or something but it's i don't come in here and decorate i got (laughs) in the other room i got a picture of a lighthouse i got butterflies on my wall it's like (laughs) yeah they it's weird there's like so many places i've been and you just walk in you're like this is my home for the next and you're not like in college, like in college, I was buying like post. I mean, I'm old. So like I was buying posters for the wall and going to like Spencer's and being like flipping through the fucking thing. <laughs> and, uh, but I would get posters and just put them up. But like when you're overseas, I just kind of was just like, this is where I'm at. And I just, I like, didn't even, didn't even mess with it. But I like that uniqueness that I like that style of just being like, I'm going to put a little bit of my, my stuff in here. Cause it does, mm-hmm. it adds color. It's like, but people will look at those pictures behind you and be like, wow, like this is such an artistic and it's like you just kind of are thrown into a situation and be like, what wall looks prettiest? <laughs> this yeah. one. Where's my couch sitting? This, okay, cool. Because everything is yeah, just done already. I don't know. And then I moved into this apartment and they, they always put like a few plants in there to make it <laughs> feel like home. And it's like, all right, well now, now I just got to w- remember to water these p- plants so they don't die. <laughs> and it's just, you know, it's nice. It's, it makes it, it really does make it feel more like home and not just like a white walled apartment. Like, yeah. so, and it's, you know, it's all right. But if it was a apartment with just all white walls, I wouldn't mind either. <laughs> are you having to like, you said all the, all the stores are closed. You can't like, you, you ordering food a lot. Are you cooking a lot? How are you eating over there right now? Yeah. Being, so uh, the you know new to the area and you know yeah, you know, how are you the, managing with that? The grocery stores are open. Um, you know, obviously you just have to wear a mask when you go inside, but at the same time, I'm ordering a lot of food. Um, I'm not. I'm not huge on cooking. You know, when I cook, it's like chicken, rice, and vegetables, um, the go-to. But yeah, ordering food, pe- places deliver, um, and it's just it's just so much easier now because I'm so used to not being out and about that like it just feels weird to go to the grocery store and go shopping when you have to wait in line sometimes to get into the grocery store because they there's so they can only let in so many people at once and it's it's just it's a really interesting dynamic that in the past i would cook for almost every meal and now i'm ordering food because it just it just seems like the way things are now you know what's funny i it was a friend of mine who played in like the same era i did um over there 
uh, he was just like, how do, how do they use their cell phones now? And I actually don't even know. And I was like, I need to ask one of the guests that we have on, because I know when I went, like my flip phone that I had at the time, mm -hmm. like once I went, that thing was like obsolete. Like there was, it was just, I put it in my bag and I didn't touch it because it, you were in a different country. There's no anything. But now guys use like their actual cell phones. Like you're using your, mm -hmm your same cell phone that you have at home, what is it you just have to, I mean, I had to go buy a phone and put chips in it and I had like 20 minutes or yeah. so. It was like old school. What are you doing now to use that, to like use your phone? Yeah, I always got to help the rookies out with that when they get here. <laughs> but um, it's usually first few weeks, it's like, all right, everywhere I go, I need the Wi-Fi password yep. because that's the only way I can use my phone. I get iMessage, I can do whatever with that. So aside from Wi-Fi, um some people in the states they can get like an international plan especially mm -hmm. with t-mobile because telecom is it's the same company and that's like the big um phone company over here and but for me you know i this is my sixth season here so i have a german phone plan that i just <laughs> i just use so i have my german phone and my american phone and my american phone just kind of chills here um <laughs> but i get it's it's nice with the iphone because i hook my apple id up to it so mm -hmm. anybody that texts my american number it comes through to oh, my yeah. phone as long as they have an iphone also yeah that's crazy that yeah. is like yeah it's something i was wondering about too because i yeah it was like you just what do you do? I mean, I don't know like how international, but like you said, people get international rates and stuff, but like my phone just went in them into my suitcase and I got a phone there and like my computer became my communication. It was like Skype and all that. Yeah. My, my, um, my first year in Germany, when I first got there, they gave me like a, a little cell phone, like a flip phone. And there's like just to call and they put some numbers in there of like, you know, the basketball offices and like whatever, if I ever needed anything. Um, but I still had my American phone that would work on Wi Fi. But the problem then, I was in like a really small city and it wasn't like Wi Fi wasn't like it is now. Like you would, you would have to be at like a, a hotel or like somewhere to get Wi Fi. It wasn't every coffee shop just had Wi Fi. So I, that was weird. And I would remember like my first weeks in this new city that I just moved into, like really paying attention as I walk around. So I don't get lost. Cause I can't just pull up the GPS on yep. my phone and get back to my apartment. That's correct. People do I wrote a whole entire like chapter about that. Like just, just, I had no idea what I was, I got completely lost and I didn't have a phone. Like I didn't have anything. I was just like, I'm in Kosovo and people are just, uh, no one speaks English and I'm just like completely lost. And I'm like, I need to go to practice. And they're just staring and smiling at me. I'm like, this is <laughs> awful. But that's how was, oh, God, how, was God. Your experience, how was your experience driving for the first time? The, the, so like same thing, like I had the first car was like stick and mm -hmm. That took like a while of in a parking lot and me stalling it out and like destroying whatever. I'm sure like every American who had that car before me, like that thing, but those, that <laughs> the gears were completely stripped. Like you could just pretty much just slide it from one thing to another. Oh, but yeah. that was, that was tough. I think like I was in Australia and New Zealand. I played like a year in both. And um, that was crazy. Like driving on the wrong side of the road was, yeah. that was wild. That was very unique. And that, like I would, I came home and I was like, I, you're so disoriented. How about you? Yeah, um, I mean, at first in like the new city and everything, I would always be like, all right, if I can walk there, I'm going to walk there because yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm nervous right now. It's like a new car. Um, my first two years or my first three years, I had an automatic. And then my first year I got a manual, which um i learned pretty quickly i, I kind of had an idea from back in america some mm -hmm. of my friends um but it, once i got used to the way germans drive i'm like man america is doing it all wrong <laughs> <laughs> the people are so much more polite over here when they're driving and the way the autobahn works with no speed limit it's like 
if you're passing somebody, you get one lane over and then you're back into the right lane. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, it's, it just seems so simple and nice. And, you know, <laughs> now it's, it, it's easy. It's cool. Well, take it from me, Max. I was on 295 earlier. It is not at all like Germany. <laughs> I know. My first trip to the shore in the summer every year, I'm like oh. so nervous. Cars pass me on both sides. <laughs> Everyone's flying around. Then you, there's like some jackass doing like 50 in the left lane. You're like, yeah. I feel like, yeah. That you get by the end of the summer, I'm like just one <laughs> hand on the wheel, like not even paying attention, just, just going. And then I uh -huh. get over here and it's totally different. <laughs> So Max, craziest overseas story. Craziest overseas story. Oof. I mean, there, there's a few. Um, yeah, everyone has those few. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a few. Um, are we talking like just basketball game, the craziest thing that happened in a game or just in general? In general, yeah. Like whatever's, whatever's the crazy, I know there's crazy shit happen on and off the court. And I don't even know which is which is wilder. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now I'm excited. I, yeah. I, well, I would say craziest. Um, last year we played in Athens, um, and if you know, the fans in Greece are absolutely mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. We're like just warming up for the game, and there's just people in the stands just smoking weed like the whole place just smells like weed already <laughs> it's great and then there's like some like drunk people that are like one row back just like pointing you out and it it felt almost like college like the way the you know the fan section were like yep. they were just yelling stuff at you and that was crazy and we start the game things are going really well we were playing a, a good team and um towards the end of the game it's really close fourth quarter refs make like two or three bad calls in a row and all of a sudden things are getting thrown onto the court water bottles like whatever and I'm like what's going on like all all the people on at on Athens are just going back to the bench and I'm just sitting there like what like what is happening like this is this is absolutely crazy like what how are they going to stop this and they're just like waiting they have to like mop up the floor because there's like drinks and everything on the floor and then we just get back to playing again. And like, it was normal. Yeah. And I'm like, this is, <laughs> this is not normal. Like I'm going to get hit with something. I don't want to, I don't want to go through this. So that was like, probably the most, uh, that was probably the craziest thing. Like that I was just shocked in general. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have some stories of just games that we've played where like, making a crazy comeback or a crazy run in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. Like last year, um, we had a game where we were down 27 in the fourth quarter with like eight minutes left and we came back and won, which wow. that's crazy. It doesn't even make sense. It, yeah. yeah it, it's wild. Like stories like that, you know, I'm not going to forget. I'm not going to forget um, being on a team my first year in the first league this team just moved up from the second league to the first league. And they've done that maybe two or three times in the past and just moved back down. Cause yeah. if you're the last two teams or the top two teams, you get promoted or relegated. And everybody was like, man, I hope we stay in the league. I hope we stay in the league. And then we go on to beat Euroleague teams like Bayern Munich, Alba Berlin. And we finish uh, in the fifth place and we were playing Bamberg who's traditionally like probably in the last 20 years has you know over 10 championships mm -hmm. we have them first round of the playoffs we have all kinds of injuries already um, we're just fighting and we end up beating them and the game we beat them with we had seven players that could actually play and one dude was playing with a concussion he had <laughs> He had, uh, like, uh, what? I don't know why I can't think of the word. The things that go in your ears so you can't hear stuff, like noise. Oh, like, yeah, earplugs. Ear plugs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't think of that word. He's got <laughs> earplugs in his ears because, like, the fans with the drums and everything uh, is, like, yeah. giving him headaches. 
and he's playing. He's our four man, but he's got to play five. We have a backup, backup point guard who's just like a strong body who's playing the four spot. And we're just like, we were just battling and battling. And with this team, you know, we were just such fighters and we just pushed through everything. And we're, we're playing a team where like, you know, they got people making crazy, crazy money on the team. And it's like us winning that. I probably took bonuses away from players on that team that were more than my contract for the year, (laughs) you know? And it was just that kind of feeling like, yeah, this is our turn. Like, you know, we deserve that the money that they're getting. We need that contract that they're getting. And yeah. we're like, this is, you know, it was kind of like the little guy fighting hard. And, you know, and like our motto, our coach, um, before some games were like, he would always say, you know, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And mm-hmm. like, that just kind of really hit home for us because we were like, yeah, that's, he was tell us straight up. He's like, this team, they're better than us. They're more talented than us. Do they want to work harder than us? No. Are we going to work harder than them? Yep. And it was just like, that was like an amazing team and environment to be on. And to we made history for like the most wins for a team that just moved up. So, I mean, that whole season in general is crazy for me. I love the the passion um, because one of the one of the you know stigma of being a professional overseas athlete is you're you're like a hired gun like you're brought in and you, your contract changes year after year your shift constantly shifting changes or constantly constantly shifting teams so you get that that like label as you're not really passionate um, and you don't really care much about the team uh, you're there to make your money so you know. To, to boost your name and then get the hell out of there. So it's really cool to hear you talk about it and like, you know, kind of, you know, make that label disappear because uh, that's passion. And I think uh, a lot of athletes have that passion. They don't realize, people don't realize that even if you're an overseas guy, even if you're an American, you come to another team, you still have that passion. You still have that mm-hmm. fire. You want to win. And, you know, an upset like that can mean so much. And like you said, you're taking you took bonuses away from guys who are making so much money, you know, so much. They're like huge European, you know, big time names and stuff. And you're just, you know, you knock them off and people are just like, this isn't what's supposed to happen. Like, I can't imagine. And now I'm thinking about the other side, like how pissed off people got when they lose, when they lost, oh, yeah. you know, like ownership and stuff like that. What though that team, they probably were like, check, like, get me on a plane. Yeah see it because I'm not dealing with the repercussions I mean I'm sure I'm sure that team had the few people or that had some of the few people that just wanted to get their money and and leave and that's what happens you know because there are people like that out here but they get Mm -hmm. weeded out real quick yeah and you know that's just the truth of it as soon as because especially when people get older in their career they might start thinking like hey I don't want to play anymore but this money is yeah. better than any money I'll make. I'll just do one more year. Yeah. And I mean, th- like you have to have that passion to be successful. And you know, that they get weeded out real quick if you got if you have players like that on your team. It's so true. They they really do get weeded out. I feel like there's mm-hmm. I've played with guys who are just like whatever. Like let's just cash this check. And I play with yeah. guys who like Americans who are like we need to win. I know a guy, you know, Mike Jordan uh, played in yeah. Germany for a long time, uh, you know, local guy. He was like fiery. Like he just wanted to win wherever he went. And I remember watching him even when, you know, my brother went to Penn with, with Mike and Matt uh, Langle and they just watching them working out with them in the summer. I think I learned a lot about, you know, that passion. And then all three of them ended up, ended up playing overseas and I kind of followed in their footsteps but that's how you kind of learn and like I'm saying sure the same happened with TJ like you kind of like followed those footsteps and saw that passion and uh, I think that's great to have like that mentor that you know close to home um, that that helps you understand you know this is not just cashing a check yeah a hundred percent I mean TJ my brother has helped me like with everything and like just as far as like a role model goes he's been you know, perfect for me, you know, only being 
two and a half years older than me. Like he's going through stuff right before I go through stuff. And if I need help, he helps me. And then the best part is I got somebody to work out with in the summer. Yeah. Um, we're going through the same stuff and you know it's just it's been really nice and you know it must have been a lot harder for him going through it all by himself for the first time but <laughs> you know I have him and like this year's been a little bit different with corona and we live really far away from each other but mm -hmm. in the past like if we would have two days off for whatever yeah. reason like we would meet up no matter what and so that's cool. just such a good you know boost of energy you get um you know it just makes it's a little taste of home and it just it refreshes you for the rest of the season that's so cool i definitely can relate i know you know with my brother he played we played together in the g league or the d league g league i don't even know what to call it anymore because when i say d league uh, people are like what and then when i say g yeah. league they're like wasn't the d league back then i'm like what the fuck i'm like damned if i do yeah <laughs> so we played we played together there same kind of thing, you know, helped me get into the uh, break into pro basketball. And then uh, ever, ever since then, we were always in different countries. So it was like we can never meet up. I ended up going my last year in the D-League, going to France where he was at in Malouse and visiting him. That was super cool. But, like, I do think that especially it's a long season over there. And, and having that familiar face to, like, come and visit is yeah. is awesome do you have friends who come out who come out do you have like because i always say like you got to be a good fucking friend to 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 fly although or like a not a good friend at all and just one yeah. <laughs> but you have to line. be like a, yeah like a loyal friend to be like i'm gonna come out and i'm gonna watch all your games i'm gonna support you you have a lot of people coming out uh yeah I, obviously not this year but in the past i you know have one or two people visit per year um and you know, well, I would actually, because me and my brother, we have a lot of um, the same friend group as we got older, yeah. you know, so um, we would have like, it'd be a group of like three people that just all come for like two weeks, three weeks, and you just kind of try and make the best out of it, visit, they spend some time with him, some time with me, and it's usually like during Oktoberfest or... Uh, yeah. um, the big one for us is carnival in cologne which is just like a week-long party and it's just kind of we want to show them the best time possible <laughs> and you know we just got to try and balance basketball in with that which you know but yeah having friends come and visit that's that's really nice because they then they get to like see it firsthand like what you go through you know yeah you come back from practice like tired as hell or whatever and <laughs> they want to go walk around the city oh. and you're like walking with them limping around because yep. <laughs> you've been getting beat up all week and it, you know they see it and it's not just like you know because as you know being a pro when you go back home in the summer everybody's complaining about their jobs like oh you're a pro basketball player you don't know it's like all right man like it's not <laughs> I'm working hard too it's just I just love what I do that's the yeah. only difference you're not liking what you do but you know, my body hurts, you know, I'm putting in the hours, I'm not getting a, the sleep that I want to get, I got to wake up early for practice, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's just different jobs, and some people don't, don't see that until, you know, they live with you for a week, and then you, they get to experience it. I always think, I always, I think back to the people who came and visited me, I always felt bad, because I was like, now that you look back, and you're like, we could have done more like they I when I was in Australia, one of my closest friends came out and visited. Um, and, you know, we went out to dinner, we did stuff, we had some fun times like, but like they wanted they were like, I want to go I'm, I was living in Cannes. So they're like, let's go I want to go snorkeling. And I'm like, well, I have a game tomorrow. I was like, snorkeling is like more of like, a I have three days off kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's, you know, where I'm at with that. And so they and so I they were like, okay, well, we'll go on our own and stuff. So I felt like I didn't I was like a bad host and I look back at it now, but now then I'm like, well, shit, like I was in the middle of a season. Like, I can't just, like you said, yeah. you can't just drop everything and be like, you want to see the world? Well, guess what? Like, I, I'll show you, here's, here's the ticket. I can get you for free, but you know, I'm not coming with you. Yeah. That's it. That's the truth right there. But that, that's why like, you know, in the beginning, my first two years, I would have like one friend come and visit me um, at a time. And it was, it was just like that. Like, all right, well, 
<laughs> if I have my practice in the middle of the day, we can't do anything. If I yeah. have a morning practice, like I, I don't want to be out all night and then come back and just have practice the next day. So I started, I would just be like my friend group, like, Hey, plan it out a few of you guys together. So I'll give you a key to my apartment. I'll go do my <laughs> thing. You guys go do what you want to do together. So you don't have to do it alone. And then we come back, we'll have dinner together, whatever, we'll chill. And then when I get a day off, then we can do something. Yeah, that's such a good plan. And that's like for any, for any basketball players listening to this, that's how, or like future wannabe overseas basketball players, that's how you got to plan it. You got to make sure your friends know, you know, you still have a job to do. Like I, yeah. and you, like you were saying, like some of my friends were like, well, like they, they can, we can go home, I can go home and it's like, a, a Wednesday night and the Phillies are playing like the, the Padres in San Diego. It's like a 10 o'clock game and we're all out drinking and they just get up and like roll to their gross office and gross jobs. And they're like, whatever. But I was like, yeah. it doesn't work like that with basketball. Like you can't just show up hungover and terrible every day. You'll be a mess. <laughs> or you'll be sent your ass to be sent home. <laughs> And it does feel good sometimes when my group chat, everybody's complaining on Monday, like uh, about going to work. Yeah. And I'm over here. I'm already done practice. I'm like sitting in the sun or something, sending them a picture, and they just get so mad at me. Yeah, that's <laughs> – it's always nice messing with them a little bit like that. But, yeah, it is It is like legitimately a real job. It's not just playing for fun. Like you have to put in the work, and it's going to suck sometimes, and you're going to have to do stuff you don't want to do, but it's part of the job. <laughs> Well, Max, this has been super cool. Uh, it's been great, great talking to you, talking uh, Monmouth University, talking, you know, Germany and, and basketball. Uh, last question, Oktoberfest, is it like, you know, d definitely do that or is it like a lot of hype? If you're there at the time, definitely do it. Um, it it's, pr it's, yeah, it's worth it. It's worth right. it. Um, right. I've been in the area and – it's just, it's crazy at that time. All right. I got to, yeah, I'm, that's on the bucket list. <laughs> hey, do it. Let me know. I'm yeah. still playing over here. Oh, I'm, I'm like, yeah, Max. <laughs> yeah. I know we talked about not having people come over, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, do it, man. That'd be awesome. Well, this has been awesome, Max. I really appreciate your time. Um, we wish you the best of luck this year. We'll be in touch. Uh, we're, we're, like we said, we tell everyone we're fans. Um, so we're going to be watching and, and rooting hard for you. So uh, best of luck for the rest of the season. Uh, make some more kick-ass art. And this has been a lot of fun. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for having me. And yeah, if you ever want to do it again, just let me know. There's no problem. Absolutely. Thanks, Max. Thanks, man. Yeah, take it easy. You too. Max DeLeo joining us today on the uh, Overseas Famous podcast. Lots of fun. Uh, I, I do like those little questions. I like asking, like, the younger guys, like, so just stuff about, like, the cell phone. Like, there's stuff that I have no idea what's going on over there. Like, I'm, like, clueless. I'm just kind of like, uh, let's – I want to know the answer. And I feel like some people – it just gives an insight into what's going on with some of the uh, overseas stuff. What years did you play up to? You played up to what? 2008? 2011. You played up to 2011. Yeah. Even in like, I mean, you got to think, brother, I, I know it's hard. To, I don't know it's hard, but that was 10 years ago. Oh, and, yeah. It's a completely <laughs> different world. Completely different world. Exactly. It's a completely different world. The technology is different. You know, what's available to help these young guys and young ladies is, is definitely different. And to get his perspective was, was uh, very interesting. I thought it was interesting when he mentioned the, that the refs were rusty. Yeah, I like I, that. I, I get that. I, I don't know. I, I, have you been watching any baseball lately? Oh, yeah. The ops are definitely rusty. It's weird, man. Like, you're, like, even with the instant replay, and that's exactly where my mind went. It's just like I feel like every night there's just like, hey, they blew it. Hey, they yeah. blew it in this game. Hey, they blew it in this game. And it's it always, yeah, it's always been working out against the Phillies lately. It's yeah. like Reese Hoskins' home run, although, you know, it's the truth, but, like, you know, run, the McCutcheon getting thrown out out of the base path. Yeah. It's a disaster. Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the nature of baseball. Some people are like, man, the nature of baseball is the human, human uh, error, you know, like you got these guys making the, the balls and strikes, and they're like, should we change it to, uh, like, a laser, like – you know, so it's exact, you know, like yeah. we have the technology to do it. So should we go ahead and do it? 
exactly removing the ump from the game is part of the game of baseball like if and i like the yeah lower strike then you throw the lower strike you have to have a little bit of savviness so it does and i started and being a baseball guy myself i was starting to think about the that and i was like i don't know if i would love that yeah i don't want it all i want a little help when you need it and i like i like like even the i was watching the sixers play last night and they challenged a call um earlier and then they there's another call where they cut where mb got called for a traveling where he didn't walk was like late in the game late in overtime and i'm sitting there i'm like that if they didn't use that challenge then they would have used the challenge but they already did and it sucks because it was like you know i bet you know money and i was like if Embiid scored 35 i would win and he scored 34 and that basket took it away so i was like <laughs> son of a bitch they took two baskets away from him too i was like so i lost that and uh you know no crying in baseball or basketball or betting so the vegas man they know <laughs> yeah seriously well this has been super cool oh go ahead go ahead we gotta make sure we get some feedback on the new website oh yeah new website is up um if you are w yeah www.overseasfamous.com new website is up we got all kinds of bloggers um you know lots of lots of different stories people tell sharing their stories um also the podcast is on there we got our 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 merch on there as well so uh we're growing and it should be fun so check that out uh use co promo code 20 uh 20 off for 20 percent off your first order um and it should be fun but yeah this is cool i'm glad we got to do this uh we just got yeah shade under an hour so uh, we'd like to thank uh, Max DeLeo for joining us today, talking overseas basketball. Obviously, DJ John Hunt doing his thing. As always, um, this is, uh, we were just just the two of us today. No uh, interns, we'll, we'll get them back um, pretty soon. There's schedule conflicts and stuff, finals but uh, Michaela, obviously. Finals week over there. <laughs> yeah, finals week, man. The kids are, kids, are, kids are working, so, you know, John and I are holding down the fort. This has been the Overseas Famous Podcast. I'm Kevin Owens. We'll see you guys next time. Write the wrong answers on the mirror for me. That's why I pick and choose. I don't get you confused. I got a small circle. I'm not with different crews. We walk the same path, but got on different shoes. Live in the same building, but we got different views. I got a couple cars I never get to use. Don't like my women single. I like my chicks and twos. And these days, all the girls is down the road. I hit the strip club. And all them just find a pole Plus I've been sipping so this shit is moving kind of slow Just tell my girl to tell a friend that it's time to go Now tell me how you love me You know you at the top and all the heavens right above it We own It's young money, motherfucker If you ain't running with it, run from it, motherfucker Alright, man, somebody show some money in this bitch And I got my bees with me like some honey in this bitch You dig? My gun in my boot purse And I don't bust back Because I shoot first Meet me on the fresh train Yes, I'm in the building You just on the list of guest names And all of my riders do not give a f X games Guns turn you boys into pent up sex chains and I smoke till I got chest pains And you just know I rep my gang like Jesse James Women are possessive and they wanna possess Wayne I've been fly so long I fell asleep on the p -p plane Skinny pants and some vans Call me Triple A, get my advance in advance Amen, as the world spinning dance in my hands Life is a beach, I'm just playing in the sand uh, Wake up and smell a p can't see me, but never overlook me. I'm on the paper trail, and ain't no telling where it took me. Yeah, and I ain't a killer, but don't push me. I, I tell me how you love me.